Hello everybody, this is Dr. Harris, and welcome to the video cast on SRAM's communication model. This video cast is part of the series on the rationale for integrating technology into teaching. If you look in the upper right hand corner of this slide, you'll see a picture of Wilbur Schramm. He was a scholar in the field of mass communications. He was a professor at the University of Illinois and at Stanford, and he ended his career as the director of the East West Center's Communication Institute in Honolulu, Hawaii. Prior to that, however, in 1941, he worked for the Office of War Information and studied the nature of propaganda. In 1954, he developed this communication model that you see on the slide. So, this communication model starts with a sender, the person who has a message to send. We're going to call that message the signal, and ends with a receiver. The sender encodes that message in some way, and that could be verbally, it could be um, through written word, it could be singing, however the sender decides to encode that signal that they want to send to the receiver. And then the receiver has to decode that signal in order to understand what it is that the sender is trying to communicate. Another important feature of SRAM's communication model is the feedback loop. So as the sender of a signal, you have no idea if the receiver has received that signal uh, unless they give you some sort of feedback. Um, you don't know if they've received that signal exactly how you meant it to go across. You don't, you're not, for example, if you're giving directions, you're not sure they understand all the directions. Um, if you're delivering content information, you're not sure if they're understanding all of that confirmation, content information, unless you get some sort of signal from that receiver. Um, as a teacher, when you look out into the room and look at your students, sometimes people will be nodding, sometimes people will be, you know, clasping their head, um, or putting their head down on their desk. So those are some ways that you can determine uh, how that signal is coming across. You can also do that in more formal ways by asking questions of your students um, or by having students do something after you give the directions or respond to part of the content that you've just given. Unfortunately, that signal is prone to interference, which SRAM calls noise. So, if you think for a minute about the types of things that can interfere with what you're trying to tell someone, um, you can think of it from the point of view of if you are the sender and you're trying to tell somebody something, what are things that can interfere? But you can also think of it as you, the receiver, what kind of things affect you that make you not able to hear a clear signal. Some of these things in a classroom could be actual noise, like a loud air conditioner, um, mowing outside the windows, but they can also be things like um, if someone is really hungry or if someone is really tired, they might not be really paying attention to you and getting all the information that you're trying to send in that signal. Students with specific learning disabilities or students who are non-native speakers of English may also experience noise when you're trying to send that signal. The next key feature of SRAM's communication model is overlapping fields of experience. You can see those represented by the two ovals, and the sender has a certain set of experiences that they use to communicate information with, that they use to organize information, and the receiver has their own set of, field of experiences that they use to decode information. And the goal with these fields of experience is that they do overlap so that the sender and the receiver have some common ground that they're using to communicate. In a classroom, these are things that you do when you refer to the prior knowledge of a student. This also could happen when you show a video of a concept that you're about to talk about so that you can continue to refer to the video and you know that everyone in the classroom has had that same experience that you have. It uh, could also be going on a field trip. So you have some type of shared experience that you are 
um, using to discuss the content that you want to get across and that the receiver can use to decode that content and put it in, um, in a way that they can understand it themselves. So the reason that we still study SRAM's communication model, even though it was produced in 1954, is because it really helps us think about how we communicate as teachers. We need to be able to identify the noise that our students might experience. We need to be able to create those overlapping fields of experience. So if our students have no idea of what content we're presenting, they've never had, they've never learned about that before, they've never heard about it before, we need to be able to provide them with experiences that allow them to hang that content onto something. And of course we need to know if our students understand what it is that we're talking about. So it's not okay for us as teachers just to keep talking and assuming that everybody knows what's going on. We have to check in with them. We have to be sure that they are understanding what we're actually doing. There's several ways that we can use SRAM's communication model when we're thinking about how we might integrate technology into their lessons. We can think about how we can use technology to build overlapping fields of experience. I've given you some examples like showing a video. Um, we can also use technology to eliminate noise, and we'll be talking about this more in the future when we talk about universal design for learning. But what, what is it that I'm trying to get across, and is there a way that I can eliminate that noise by encoding that message in a different and better way. So, for example, maybe I don't just verbally communicate directions to students. Perhaps I have written directions as well. Perhaps I have a demonstration. So what are some ways that I can use technology to limit or um, reduce or even alleviate noise that's interfering with that signal? So these are things to think about when you are thinking about your content area and how different technologies may or may not be useful for you to get across the information you want to convey to students.